Do it right for less. Do it right for less. Does this tagline ring a bell? In this episode, we'll be talking about a 99-year-old company that is now the second largest home improvement retailer store in America. Lowe's. The company's origins date back to 1921 when Lucius Smith Lowe opened the North Wilkesboro Hardware, the first Lowe's store ever in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Lucius Lowe was born on 22 February 1879 in North Carolina to John Anton Lowe and Marinda Lowe. Fast forward a few years to 1921 when he set up a small hardware store in Wilkesboro naming it Lowe's. His initial idea was to sell appliances, hardware, and construction materials. The store was later remodeled to a supermarket with seasonal products placed at the front of the store. He later got married to Floyd Elizabeth Ray and had two children, Ruth and Jim. Lowe then died in 1940, unfortunately bringing us to the end of his journey, but not the company's. Now the ownership succession resembles a game of hot potato. Following his death, Lucius's daughter Ruth soon took over the reins. She later sold it to her brother Jim, who in turn offered his brother-in-law, Carl Buchan, part ownership in the company in 1943. North Wilkesboro Hardware changed its name to Lowe's Hardware in 1946. H. Carl Buchan was born in 1916. Carl attended State College, now North Carolina State University, hoping to get a degree in journalism. After Pearl Harbor, Carl and his four brothers joined the military. He then graduated from Officers Training School in Camp Lee, Virginia, and was sent to Officers Candidate School in Texas. Carl came to North Wilkesboro and became a partner with his brother-in-law, Jim Lowe. His vision to expand the successful North Wilkesboro hardware store only truly began in 1964 after the Lowe's Sparta hardware store reached success, and Carl saw no reason why Lowe's marketplace should not extend far past its perimeter. Carl and Jim ran the hardware business from 1946 to 1952 but eventually the pair developed a difference of opinion for the brand. Carl sought business out of town and soon became the sole owner of Lowe's Hardware. He had the talents of an innovative thinker, which became apparent in the 1950s when he challenged the practice of retailers having to buy goods from wholesalers and other middlemen rather than direct from the manufacturers. Fair trade laws in several states protected the practice he challenged. He was a great lover of technology, believing that it could increase efficiency and keep costs down. Every low store in the 1950s had an IBM 402 accounting machine, a workhorse of American business in that decade. Carl was gifted with the ability to recognize talent and let people exercise it rather than micromanage it himself. Through the years, he was admired by his employees who looked up to his work ethic and dedication. He would empower people to do something, then put in controls to make sure it would get done right, said Herring in an interview for No Place Like Lowe's, a history of the company's first 50 years. Carl was an innovator with an insatiable appetite for finding new and better ways to do everything, from managing inventory, motivating employees, finance expansion, to purchasing and marketing products. Before his unexpected death in 1961 due to a heart attack, Carl put in place a five-member executive committee consisting of Herring in Finance, Joe Reinhardt in Distribution and Data Processing, Peter Kulinick in Purchasing, Robert Strickland in Marketing, and Johnny Walker in Sales. They shared Carl's dream of creating a national retail chain, leading the company after his death until Herring was elected as president and CEO. The team carried out Carl's intentions of implementing a profit-sharing plan with annual dividends for employees, as opposed to a plan that didn't pay out until retirement. The plan was based on Carl's belief that a company was more likely to prosper if its employees had a definite stake in its fortunes. 
Giving employees the chance to invest in Lowe's expansion was one way to make them stakeholders in the company's fortunes. But Carl Buchan was contemplating another way as well, a corporate profit-sharing plan. Employees of Lowe's companies have benefited from what is now the Employee Stock Ownership Plan, which allows employees to share in the growth and prosperity of the company. Adding to this were many other plans created for the benefit of the employees at Lowe's. Carl was a man of morals, and he always wanted his employees to be comfortable in every environment they work in. The plans he laid out were to ensure the work-life balance of the employees. Edith Richardson of Sparta, vice president of the profit-sharing plan, said Carl wanted everybody to feel like they were a part of the company and believed you produce more if you own something. He wanted all to have their fair share. By 1960, Lowe spread over to 15 locations. His vision continues to benefit Wilkes County in many ways. Carl Buchan was an early adopter of any technology that promised to increase operating efficiency and help keep down costs. He once told a reporter from the Charlotte Observer, When I was a little boy, I never wanted to be a policeman or a doctor or a fireman. I just wanted to make a million dollars. Which, to be honest, is what we all dream of, right? By 1960, he had done the same thing several times over. Now, reaching the goal didn't make him less driven, but he instead sought out a bigger goal, to make Lowe's the largest and most successful business of its type in the world, owned and controlled by the people who built it. A man like him is very rare to find. He had morals, generosity, ambition, and faith. Now... With more than 320,000 employees, Lowe's Companies, Inc. is considered one of the largest hardware chains in the United States, as well as one of the largest in the world. According to Forbes, it is considered one of the world's most valuable brands, one of the top regarded companies, and one of the top 2,000 largest public companies in the world. A man's worth is no greater than his ambition. And I think Carl has not only lived up to this statement, but also shown us how we can have big plans and ideas and do everything in our power to make our dreams come true. Tell us what you think of Lowe's in the comment section below.